Dear Pop, well, I'm starting this year off with a bang. Deerfield is a very nice school, and I'm glad I transferred here. I can't wait till you see it. I'm making some swell friends, and Mother got me settled, and she visits a lot. I wish you could come, but I understand. In geography class, the teacher assigned your Inside Asia book. I'm the hit of the class. I guess because I know the famous author, correspondent, and radio commentator, John Gunther. Senior, that is. Someday, maybe Junior will be famous too. I really hope that when you're through with the book on Europe, you can come here. It's not too exciting, I guess, but, well, it's nice anyway. Love and kisses, Johnny. Mr. Boyden, good to see you. You didn't think you could just quietly drop by without the Deerfield Network picking it up? <laughs> has been quite some time, hasn't it? Where was it this time, South America? No, Europe. I guess you'd call it a follow-up on the war. Oh. How's Johnny coming along? Quite well, actually. Great potential, that boy. Slow starter, but he'll surprise you one of these days. Oh, he does every time I see him. Yes. Well, it's an important time for a boy. He sets great store by you, you know. Well, I see him as often as I can. I flew back last summer just to spend time with him. Is he unhappy? Oh, no, he's very, very independent boy, very self-reliant. Mrs. Gunther visits regularly. He's lots of friends. Makes friends easily, I'd say. Interesting for a shy boy. I'd say the other boy's just like him. Hey, this is my first door. When did you get in? Just arrived. Oh, Mr. Boyd. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Fine score. Look, I don't want to interrupt your game. Uh, Mr. Boyd and I will have a chat, and then maybe if it isn't stretching the rules too far, I could take him out to dinner tonight. I think we can manage that. That's great. Thank you. Great. You need to be a big boy, isn't he? For a moment, the other boys I almost didn't recognize. Would you like to come by the office and look over his reports? Uh, surely. 
Now, how are his grades? Um, I know that he took an extra subject. It seems that he, he just has to compete. He's a slow starter, just beginning to show his potential. I think we're going to see a very bright mind in the next few years. Hey, Mark. Sorry. Will you help me clean up my room, please? Are you crazy? No, my father's coming, okay? Oh, boy. Where's my shampoo? My shampoo, Edgar, have you seen my shampoo? Edgar? Hmm? Have you seen my shampoo? No, I didn't. And you can't borrow mine again. Why not? John, we've been through this twice this week already. Yeah, but only once last week. Thanks a lot, Edgar. Cripes, look at those bony knees. Hey, I like the show, huh? Edgar, please help me out. Especially the bed. I don't want my father to think I'm messy, okay? And look, Edgar, my father, he's not used to kids. If I'm in the shower when he comes up, he may be a little nervous. Be nice to him, okay? Oh, for cripes sake. Hello, Dinner dress? No, sir. I need a tie. <laughs> um, my room is the next to last one on the right. I'll be right there. I'm sorry. Take your time. Have you got anything to read in there besides chemistry text? Well, just your books. But I don't think you'll be too interested in that. You're right. Maybe you better hurry after all. Yes, sir. Mother's been teaching me some Indian philosophy. Sent me the Bhagavad Gita and stuff. It's very, very interesting. Very interesting. Did you know that they have, like, the whole life cycle planned out? Um, the baby and uh, then the child, the young man, the householder, and the wandering monk, everything. Like Shakespeare. Well, now, you're obviously in the young man stage. Uh, where would you put me? <laughs> I don't know. I never thought about that before. Um, I'd say... Um, I'd say you're a cross between a householder and a wandering monk. What if I became slightly less of a wandering monk? Well, that's terrific. You're not in any trouble, are you, Pop? I mean, people still want you to write books, don't they? Oh, I'm afraid so. But I'm getting into the USA book now, and I just might be around more. In the country, anyway. Really? Although I've, uh, I've just been offered an assignment by Look to do a thing on De Gaulle. But I should be back in time for Christmas so that we can spend our time together. Really? That'd be great, Pop. You mean all of us, Mom and everything? Sure. How about dessert? No, sir. I'm on a diet. In, you know, the war effort. A diet? We'll see about that. The war's over. <laughs> it was so familiar. Flashes of the boy I thought I knew. Yet he was a stranger. For some reason, I thought of his composing a little symphony for the Lincoln School recital. How amazing for a ten-year-old boy. Or was it eleven? I'd called him to say I couldn't make it back in time. What did he say? Yes, you could make it back. If you hired an airplane. If I wanted to get to know my son again, I would have to approach him in a way most comfortable to me, writing. If I began a journal as a reporter, maybe that sense of being a stranger to my own son would disappear, and I could become less of a reporter and more of a father. I'd been afraid the war would catch us all. I was afraid Johnny would become a part of that grinding destruction. Now there was time. 
Hello? Dr. Johnson? Oh, Deerfield. Oh, yes, yes. How are you? I'm sorry, I don't quite follow. Oh, I see. Now, look, have you called Mrs. Gunther? Yeah. Dr. Huckman. Yeah. Let me just get this down. Yeah. Yeah, I can pick him up. Well, I'll be right away. We should be up there about midnight. Right. Thank you for calling. I don't even know what the hell a choke disc is anyway. It refers to an increased intracranial pressure. Pressure on the optic nerve. The important thing is to treat it immediately. Oh, John, what is this? They wouldn't tell me anything on that telephone. A man in the car named Tracy Putnam. He's one of the top neurosurgeons in New York. A neurosurgeon? Well, no, we don't know what the problem is. It's something about pressure on the optic nerve. And the uh, school had some local doctors in, and they called for Putnam. But apparently there's no immediate danger, okay? How are you, Francis? Me? Oh, I'm fine. Like living here. Very quiet. Actually getting some work done after all those years traveling around. How was France? Did you see De Gaulle? Send his regards. Hey, what are you doing here? Papa? How are you feeling, son? Oh my gosh, I feel fine. I mean, I'm not sick enough to get both of you up here in the middle of the night. Oh, I wouldn't take it that seriously. Mm. You're just passing by, huh? Darling, how do you really feel? You know, I had a spinal tap. <laughs> wow, well, was that really something? You know what that is? They do some John, really interesting... We brought a doctor from New York, a specialist. He's going to examine you, but we don't want you to be concerned, okay? I'm not, Pop. After that spinal tap, I feel a lot better. Okay. Look, I know the school sent out those polio notices. Even if it is polio, it must be a very mild case. You see? Look, I can still touch my chest with my chin. See? That's the acid test, you know? I'm convinced. Let's let Dr. Putnam do his examination. You're fine, John. I know, Pop. Mother. You know what's really good about all this? Uh, breakfast in bed. No. I missed a history exam today. <laughs> didn't even study for it. I didn't know nothing. I guess that's kind of lucky, huh? You'll make it up. I really like it here. I mean, school and everything, I really like it. It means a lot to me. I know, sweetheart. And I got a lot of good friends. We'll be right outside, darling. Woody? What is this? What's the matter with me? I guess it's not that serious, right? Well, they would have put me in a hospital, right? Right. You're right outside, John. Right, Bob. See you in a few minutes. Give him more. Guess I spoke too soon about the hospital. Don't worry, son. They just don't have the equipment to make the right kind of tests. Okay, Bob. My mother will ride with you, and Dr. Putman and I will be in the car right behind. All right? Okay. 
Hey, you don't have to worry about me. I bet I'm the only kid in the history of Deerfield who used an ambulance to get out of an exam. Well, just this once. Don't try it again. No, sir. You're right behind you. They're not gonna electrocute me, are they? <laughs> In that Jimmy Cagney movie, that's that's what they did to him. Right before they gave him the hot seat. Funny. Funny. Almost done. Uh, is this another test? Or is this the operation? It's the operation. That'll be it. No more tests? No more tests. Next time, I'll give you a shave. OK, that's a deal. <laughs> Pretty soon, I'm going to need one. Uh, Any time. Good luck. Actually, it's quite stunning. I want to see what Mary Wilson is taking to the spring dance. You know, in some Far East and Middle East cultures, a shaved head is a sign of manhood. Here, it's a sign of baldness. Scalpel. A man named Cushing. Cushing, he was the father of this thing. Putnam here was one of his prized pupils. They practically invented this whole new branch of neurosurgery, opening up the skull, getting right into the brain. It's not a complicated operation. Very simple, as a matter of fact. I, uh, I did some research. And the question is whether the thing is encapsulated or whether...
Francis, I'm sorry. Just never were too good at being sympathetic. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that you weren't comforting in your rough bear kind of fashion. Oh, it was thoughtless of me to talk about it. Well, that wasn't it. I was uh, thinking about the baby for some reason. Why was she still born? Well, she can't answer those things. When I was pregnant with Johnny, I was so happy. As if it proved I hadn't failed. Francie. I know why I thought of it. It was those doctors. Same look of control. Oh, God, John, we've only had him 16 years. That's no time at all. Well, Francie, there's no reason to think that... <laughs> Tell me there's no reason to think my son won't die. I don't know why any child dies, but right now I want to know why mine should die. Why mine? I tried to remember what it felt like to hold him when he was a baby. I'd always remembered an early letter. Francis and I were in the Far East, 37, maybe 38. That did make him 7, 8. Dear Moody and Papa, I hope you were fine. So am I. I miss you very, very much. I hung your picture in the bedroom so I can say good morning and good night to you. I made a puppet all by myself. It's going to be a woman. Detta is making a dress for her. We read in the newspaper that a new star was discovered. It's nearly as big as the solar system. How is the book getting on? I hope it is getting on all right. With love and kisses, from Johnny G. Johnny G, to distinguish himself from all the other Johnnies we might have known. Yes. The size of an orange. I got about half of it. Half of it? What the hell does that mean? But he has something the size of an orange inside his head, for God's sake. And the brain is a very complicated organ. We don't know very much about it. The tumor is in a, for the want of a better term, an inactive region. As you can tell, Mrs. Gunther will be testing. I'm sorry? Mrs. Gunther, you can tell her that nothing is conclusive. We'll be running further tests. Tests? I thought that's what the operation was. We need to study the tissue, Mr. Gunther, to determine malignancy. I think it's premature to be discouraged. The operation went very well. Your son is very strong. I think we should be hopeful. Yeah. Sorry to seem ungrateful. It's just a... You look very tired, Doctor. I'll talk to Mrs. Gunther. Thanks for everything. Well, I'll be around in the morning. You better get some rest yourself. We're in for a long haul.
I think he's coming out of it. Squeeze my hand. Can you hear me, Gunther? Gunther? Hi, son. You made it. Hi. Really? astrocytoma, which is good, because it's a comparatively benign form of tumor. The fact that we didn't get it all during the operation isn't terribly important. I feel we have a better than fair chance of getting the rest of it through x-ray. Thank God. I want you to keep in mind that this is a preliminary report. The final slides won't be ready for a week or so, and until then, this is what we believe is the case. What about Hot Springs, Virginia? What a wonderful place for him to recuperate. Well, we could all go. Well, I think that would be all right, not right away, of course, but... Well, now, just exactly what is the program? How soon will he be able to leave the hospital? Well, as soon as he's able, I think that would be better for him psychologically. We're going to have to reduce the pressure with some additional spinals. And there are the x-ray treatments. He'll have to be in town for those. I would say a month or so. And then I think the hot springs might be a good idea. Well, that's great. Just great. Hasn't changed. This isn't necessary. As a matter of fact, it is. He's going to need you. He has to stay in New York. Conclusion, you move back in the apartment. I can stay at the Carlton right around the corner. What about your work? Well, maybe I can impose on the lady of the house, pick up a few reference books from time to time. You could impose. Very, very clean. Sit down right over here on the bed. <laughs> no, I can make a pop. Thank okay. you. Sure are a lot of flowers. <laughs> Somebody did a very good job. You know, I thought they sent flowers when somebody died. Oh, people like you. They want you to know they're with you. I just wish everybody just forget about it. Oh, Henry? It's Johnny Gunther. <laughs> yeah. I'm fine. How are you doing? Good. Yeah. Guess what? It was a brain tumor. Right. They drilled three holes in my head. From the sound of it, I'd say it was, um, oh, a three-eighths inch bit. No, I'm not kidding. Yes, I'm fine. <laughs> you know, nothing can hurt my old brains. the books. Great. A whole lot. How are you feeling? Oh, fine. Where's your mother? She went shopping. I wanted to go too, but she wouldn't let me. Well, that's probably just as well. Why? Well, we don't want to be rushing things. I do. You ready to go? Yes, sir. You know, I don't know why they have to take so many pictures of my head. They must have the most complete record of anybody's head in history. Hey, that's it. I'm a guinea pig. <laughs> Gentlemen, here you have the most incredible head of John Gunther Jr. Back in 1946. Everything about him was incredible. Especially his head. This is just for taking pictures, isn't it, Pop? Uh Dr. Putnam told me that it was just a normal follow-up procedure. I wouldn't worry about it. 
And why does it make me feel so bad? I mean, every time I go, when I come back, I feel terrible. I don't have cancer, do I? I think that we're in very good hands with Dr. Putnam. There's no reason to doubt that what he's doing is the right thing. Come on, son. slides last night. I hadn't uh, mentioned it to Francis. I had to get up my own courage to come in here. The report is not good. It's not astrocytoma. It's astroblastoma undergoing transformation. I realize that sounds like a lot of jargon. What it means is that the tumor is growing. There's always this possibility. That's the reason I didn't close the skull at the end of the operation. If I had, Johnny might have been dead within a month. As it is, this gives us more time. I um, did some research in the hospital library here. There's a kind of tumor described as always fatal. As the prefix glio, glue. Does Johnny have that kind of tumor? No. To the best of our knowledge, no. What about the x-ray treatments? Aren't they doing any good at all? It's too soon to tell that, Mr. Gunther. Besides, he's had just about all they can take for the present, so we'll have to wait and see. That's all I can tell you, Mr. Gunther. We'll just have to wait. always escaped to the old house on the Sound, as individuals, as a family. I hadn't been in Johnny's room there for years. It hadn't changed. Paintings he'd done as a child still on the walls. I tried to remember what I'd thought of those early visions. I tried to put my image of that little boy together with the drawings. He'd been small for his age. Chunky, I remember. Not like now. He was always shy. What did I think of him then? Well, of course I loved him. Fathers love their children. I liked him. He was always pleasant. I never spent the time to get to know or understand my son. What did he mean to me? I was just beginning to realize. He used to dream about being a king. With a fortress. And my own. Fortress Gunther. This exercise will help me, your left hand? No. A listener in Denver, Colorado, asks us to try this one without the papers and pencils. Take the square root of 625, multiply by 7, subtract 75, divide by 25, subtract 4. Anyone? Yes, Shelley. Zero. The answer is zero. Exactly. Excellent, son. I didn't know we had a 
kids. Quiz kid right here in the Here's house. Our musical sure. question. The it's just recall. You have to have a good memory. Who's the composer of this famous classical work, which we'll hear right now? That's... That's Mozart. Wolfgang Amadeus memory. Mozart. Exactly right. Huh? A listener in Long Island, New York, sends this question. Pop? In. Listen carefully. Memory. In chemistry, what is the See? property of some elements? That's fantastic. Different physical forms. I'm not losing my mind. This thing, this ward, it's not hurting my memory. I'm okay. Of course it is. No, no, no. You see, I thought it had. And I thought that... I thought that when they operated on my tumor... I, I thought, uh... That they took part of my brain. Oh, my God. But I'm okay. I'm okay. Hey. Think it's made me any smarter? <laughs> <laughs> I must have a hundred experiments to do. Oh, Pop, I'm going to need a library card. Yeah? Do we have a card to the Madison Library? Easy without your journal. I can't take it easy. I don't have time. I have to catch up with my school. I want to get a hole in this part of the room here so we can figure out where to put that table. Right here. Yeah, right in there. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want to get these boxes out of <laughs> back here. I remember this. Look. Yeah. You must have more room. Do we get in another room later? process. I've been working on it all summer. Oh, guess I'm having a little trouble with my coordination. There. You see, the gas goes through here and then through this tube which is insulated with rock wool and then to the dry ice. Mm hmm. Guess we're running a little low. I think, uh, oh. Um, Would you like me to give you a hand? Yes, please. Sure. Could you just add a little, uh, Dry ice in there. Yeah. How about that? I think maybe we need a little more acetone also. Here. Okay. Thanks. Now you see when? Okay. Mm, good. Looks good. A little more. Okay. Yes. Now, we have to uh, draw off the ammonia into the beaker. Okay. Give my new freezing process its big test. Yeah. You hold this. Yeah. We'll put the leaf in here. Okay. I'll put it in there? Yes. invented something. I made liquid ammonia. I did it. It's my own process. It's been done before, but not this way. Not my method. I think it's right here. I'm proud of you, son. Really proud. Thanks, Pop. I'm proud of both of you. Mr. Hayden told me that I uh, handed in enough chemistry experiments to satisfy my lab requirements. Hmm. What about language? Well, 
My Latin has always been pretty bad. Even when I went to school full time. No, yeah, there's no rush. Sir, I'd like to catch up with my class. The important thing is your health. Yes, sir. I honestly believe that the best thing for my health would be for me to catch up with my class. I'm encouraging that. There will be no problem about you rejoining your own class. The things you did this summer amply demonstrate that you can do the work. Thank you, sir. You don't know what that means to me. I think I do, John. You deserve it. Oh, sir? If I've demonstrated that I can do the work, well, why not just graduate me this fall and I'll go directly to Harvard? It pains me to tell you this, John. As a scholar, you've improved, even when you were ill. But as a con artist, you're still in first year. Well, I'll work on it. <clears throat> I'm sure you will. Thank you. do anything, really. I just came over to be with you. Really? I mean, well, thanks, you know. Oh, John, relax. It's me. Remember the first time you did that? What? That business of, hey, well, I mean, yeah, well, no. You know that. No. As a matter of fact, I don't. When your mother forced you to come to my 10th birthday and gave me a gift from you with something very girly and you didn't know you had given it to me. <laughs> I don't know how girls remember stuff like that. You remember it too. I do not. <laughs> anyway, you go through that routine every single time. You think it's endearing. Well, it's my style. I miss seeing you. You know, I'd like to come out, even if we didn't go sailing or anything. We can go sailing. Then why don't you ever invite me? Well, I've been working very hard so I can catch up with my schoolwork. I could help you. Mary, 
sometimes this this thing. Well, I don't feel very good. And I just don't want to be attracted to be around. It's easier for me. I don't feel sorry for you, John. I wasn't worried about that. I don't know anyone like you. You make me feel good. I ask you, how many people have a routine as funny as yours? Really? I mean, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> This is the king. The Prince of Wales and I must have some private conference. But be near at hand, for we shall presently. What? Is Pop in New York? No, Washington. They're talking about a sequel to the Inside USA book. Uh, I know not whether God will have it so. He's not finished with that yet, is he? Not yet. I'm slowing him up. He's always behind on deadlines. For some displeasing service I have done. Does he like us? Johnny, of course he does. I mean, he left, right? And he likes traveling? And he likes writing and stuff. Well, he comes as often as he can. Look, you don't have to defend him. I understand. I just... I want him to like me. He does. Baby, he does. He does. Johnny had never prayed. I guess because he was forced to spend so much time at chapel when he went to Riverdale as a child. Francis tried to counteract that by reading him Hindu prayers, Chinese, offbeat Christian and Hebrew. She thought she'd pretty much failed. I wasn't much help. And one day he announced somewhat proudly that he'd made one up. He called it the unbeliever's prayer. Almighty God, forgive me for my agnosticism, for I shall try to keep it gentle, not cynical, nor a bad influence. And oh, if thou art truly in the heavens, accept my gratitude for all thy gifts, and I shall try to fight the good fight. Amen. Papilodema, about four, and there's a left homonymous hemianopsia. Be some damage to the optic nerve, Mr. Gunther, with vision impairment about 25%. The tumor is growing. Of course, you don't need us to tell you that. We've asked Dr. Mead to consult with us because he is the most eminent specialist in the field. We I'm felt aware. that he might. Mr. Gunther, your child has a malignant glioma, and it will kill him. The operation has given some relief, a longer lease on life, so to speak. But as to the nature of the tumor and its uh, eventual outcome, there's no doubt. We will, of course, do everything we possibly can. That's it? You're just giving up? 
Well, if you decide on an operation, the occipital lobe could be amputated with the possibility of skull closure. That would not necessarily prolong his life, however. It would simply mean that he would be active longer. It would also mean blindness. That might be a good alternative. Frequently in cases like this, the patient gradually loses all function. The exterior bulging would be eliminated and it would drive the tumor inward. Euthanasia. Sometimes it's more merciful. Gentlemen, I'm not going to tolerate it. Mr. Gunther. My son is not going to die like a vegetable. Sir, the... You will not lose him now. There are new breakthroughs every day. Nuclear medicine. Living in an age of miracles, or what seemed like miracles just a short time ago. What would you like us to do, Mr. Gunther? Keep him alive. Today first, then tomorrow. Sir, the options are limited. I don't care how limited they are. I want to pursue them. The longer Johnny stays alive, the more time we have. That's true. And I would not hold out unreasonable hope. Dr. Hope is never unreasonable. I'm glad you came. I told him you were coming. Coffee? Yeah. How does he seem? Oh, cheerful little wisecracker, you know. He's tired, weak. Yeah, well, we're all tired. You, know, you should take some time off. In some ways, it's worse for you stuck out here. I could take him into the city, hire a nurse. Maybe I could hire that researcher that worked out so well last year. Oh, no. No, in, uh, in a way, I'm feeling better than I have in a long time. Working together like this seems like old times. Well, we said we made a good team. Did you, John? Sometimes, I wish I were different. Did things differently. Had different needs. Made different choices. We made our choices, both of us. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Johnny! Here's an article about a thing called laser beams. Laser beams? How far have they got? Well, it's a complicated prototype, nothing small. Where is it? California. Hmm? I didn't know they were there anywhere near. I forgot to get one of those I think I'm going to call. Yeah. It hasn't been tried on brain tumors, but it has worked on certain cancers. Mustard gas? Well, of course, it attacks cells. Why not? Why wouldn't it attack a tumor? Now, why didn't anyone mention this? We've talked to all the leading doctors in the field. Maybe none of them reads the Times. I sure hope medical science is grateful to me for providing this body on which to do all this interesting experimentation. You found us out. Mm -hmm. Sorry, just about to. Is this going to make him as sick as the last series? He'll be a little sick, but uh, not like the first reaction. What a relief. How long? Just a few minutes. He may need some help. I thought that mustard gas business was working. Well, it was for a while. You want me to help him? No, no, don't. John, maybe we're fooling ourselves. What do you mean? I mean, 
all this running around, calling everyone, looking for some kind of a miracle. I don't know what Johnny really thinks, but I don't think he thinks he's going to die. He couldn't and put up the fight he has. What are you saying, Francis? I don't know, but something's been bothering me about our involvement, our attitude. It's nothing, I guess. Why don't you go get him? I'll watch the stakes. No, no, no. We'll be in this together. Now, oh, I know that we've had to give up a certain amount of our own lives for a while, but that's what we have to do. Well, that's one of the things that's bothering me. It would be very easy to convince ourselves that everything we're doing is for Johnny. You're not saying what you mean, Francis. No, I guess not. Francis, you can be as exasperating as hell. I know. I just think we have to be careful not to use him. Use him? What the hell does that mean? I'm trying to do everything we can to keep him alive. That's part of it. Is that the best thing for him, or is that what we need to believe? I wonder if we've spent enough time with him. All those years, his growing up, all the boarding schools. Are we trying to make up for it now, so that we won't feel guilty about him later? Don't feel guilty. I've spent time with him. A lot of it. A lot of demands on my time. All right, John. Not asking for any credit. What I wanted it to do is grossly unfair of you to accuse me of using my own son's illness. John, I didn't want to bring it up, but that's what I'm concerned about. I spent a lot more time with him than you have. I guess I think I know him better. Well, at least in a different way. With you, it's how well is he doing in school and how smart he is. He was never a baby with you. Not a baby now. A young man showing a lot of guts. More than most adults I know. Yes, and you like that. What's wrong with that? There's a lot more to him than that. There's a frightened little boy who doesn't quite understand what's happening to him. People he knows are not telling him the whole truth. I mean, this business of these hospital procedures all being follow-up to the operation, he knows better than that. I look. Psychologically, he could not face the fact that he's going to die. He needs all the will he can muster so that he'll live. That's why he's alive now. Is that what he needs to believe, or is that what you need? It doesn't matter what I need. It is what he needs. Damn! I'll get some more. But there's a shortage of these things. Well, I always leave a little margin for error. I guess I'm just afraid and jealous. All the time we've spent together, as close as we are, what he really wants is to be like you. I love him too, Francis. I know. Francis. We can be friends. Yes. It's important to me, do you know that? I think I do. But that can be sad too, can't it? You should know, Mr. Gunther, I am very much disliked by 95% of the AMA. Oh, forgive me, please, I do not wish to distort. 99%. I'll be frank. I'm here because all my alternatives are exhausted. That is usually the case. We both have Johnny's interest at heart, Mr. Gunther. You know, there's a great deal we do not know about the way the body functions. Diet happens to be one of them. You don't approve of his methods? He's a very opinionated man. His demands for a, a rigid adherence to his program, complete elimination of medication, and that, in my opinion, is reckless. What would you do if John were your son? I'd try anything. One pint of grapefruit juice. A pint? Nice bowl of apple carrot mash. Mmm, that looks good. Well, I'm sure we'd all be a lot healthier if we stuck to a good diet like that. Yes, we would. But is it worth it? <laughs> oh, come
come on, you two. This is going to be delicious. This is a nice, fresh soup of parsley root, celery knob, leek, and tomato. Well, now we're getting down to the good stuff. You're to have a quart and a half of this throughout the day. All of us? Now, Pop, you do want to set a good example, don't you? Oh, sure. It's just that I think I have an appointment in town. Oh, at the 21 Club? Oh. <laughs> well, the best part is for dinner you can have some pot cheese and pumpernickel. Oh, good. With uh, butter and... No, no butter. Oh. Please uh, pass the salt. Sure. Oh, no salt. Wow, well, it could be worse. How? This is dessert. Lightly cooked oatmeal. Lightly cooked? It could be worse. You're right, it got worse. Mm. Awful, huh? Well, at least we discovered the cure for tapeworm. What's that? Just put the patient on the Gerson diet, and the worm will leave in despair. <laughs> <laughs> He must have an operation. I mean, he may be improving in every other way, but the tumor is growing. It is its death throes. Dr. Gerson. He's about to evacuate itself. With all due respect, and I must say your results have been amazing, this is now a surgical question. My puncture yesterday revealed the tumor to be rock hard. We only got a few drops of fluid. It's merely a stage. Well, the fact of it is we don't know what this tumor is doing. We don't know where it may be heading. And all we can do at any given moment is approach it as well as we possibly can. In my opinion, that means surgery. I have had other cases where I think Dr. Gerson, in all of my clinical experience, nothing ever, ever indicates that this kind of thing will work with a tumor of this nature. Just I resented this goddamn growth. It was almost as though I was in some kind of race with it for my son. Everything that makes Johnny who he is, goodness, wit, the enchantment of his personality, his ego itself, all I was trying to learn, get to know about my son, was in that brain, being killed remorselessly by that evil growth. Just do nature's true way. You, you are dealing against me. So what, what you're asking us to do? Gentlemen, I'd like to remind you that we're not talking about a technique. We're not talking about someone's method. We're talking about the life of a young man. I would like to ask you to work together for my son. Please. I'm not going. Please, darling. All the doctors agreed. Gerson? Yes? Well, I don't care. I'm not going to have another operation. They've had their chance. I just don't have time for it. I've got too many things to do to have them just experimenting all the time. I'm sorry I was such a baby last night. No, yes. no. You're right, they should operate. This, this bump is poisoning my nerves. Besides, it'll help take my mind off my brain. Ooh. <laughs> Pretty bad, huh? Pretty bad. You know, sometimes I think that's why I got this thing. Some metaphysical force to bring us all back together again. I must say, I can't explain it. I don't even know of any precedence, but the fact is, the tumor is in remission. Is it possible? Oh, my God, John. I know, I find that hard to believe myself, but the evidence is there. The tumor is literally evacuating itself.
He'd grown three inches since the tumor began. In all his 17 years, I'd never taken him shopping. Never bought something which was personal. In the fourth week of the remission, he wrote, Last night I embarrassed Mother by asking her to teach me to dance. I just have to learn when I go back to school. Actually, she liked it, I think. What a wonderful day. Here is a prayer I thought of at the hospital. Live while you live, and die and be done with it. December, he wrote, philosophy. Get yourself off your hands. Happiness is in love. Accept disappointments. I'm growing up at last. <laughs> All right, dear friends, we've come to a very important moment. The opening of the bottle. The bottle of champagne. Huh? The bottle of champagne. To celebrate a very important occasion. Not just Christmas. Now, I had trouble with these before. Okay, Johnny. Everybody wants this. Yeah, I like it. Forget you, Henry. <laughs> All right. Sorry, dear. Let me help. All right. <laughs> How are we doing? Everybody got one. You got yours? I didn't get one. Did you? Oh. Oh. All right. And the toast. It's Johnny's good health. Here, here. Good health, health Johnny. Here, here. Okay. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> we had expected no more Christmases. I'd never quite understood the meaning of this holiday before the Christmas of 1946. The meaning of a family. The pleasure of my son's friends. The pride of being a father, not a journalist or radio commentator, but just a father made me sad, even at the height of my joy, to think how much I had missed, almost everything that mattered. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plain, and the mountains in reply, echoing their sweet refrain,
Johnny, what is it? Johnny? What day is it? Wednesday. Thursday. Morning, or is this the evening? You're having breakfast. Where am I? Oh, my God. You're in your father's New York apartment in New York City. What happened yesterday? Yesterday there was a demonstration. Dr. Gerson invited some people over to hear about your recovery. Isn't that funny? You can't remember anything. What year is this? It's 1947. Johnny, do you know who you are? Um, I'm Johnny. You just call me Johnny. <laughs> yes, Johnny Gunther. I'm your mother. Yes, I know. Um, I have to take exams, and I've been studying. I've been studying very hard, and, um, I don't know. I have, I have a tutor. No, I have two tutors. <laughs> one in math, and one in Latin. Right. What is this? Mother, why can't I remember anything? Darling, you're tired. You have been studying too hard. It's coming back. It's coming back. If it comes out again, will it be for the last time? Okay, really gonna want you this time. Just to read this. <laughs> Two pair. Full house. What? <laughs> You're not letting me win, are you, Pop? Hmm? No, I know. I'm pretty good at poker. You always were. Yeah. Adults are too cautious. You ready to lose some more money? You're not too tired. I'm not a bit tired. As a matter of fact, I'm feeling fine. I don't even know what I'm doing back here. I've got a lot of things to do, you know. I wonder how the bump is.
Hi, big fella. How about a shave and a haircut? No! Now get out of here! Get out of here! I don't want you to shake my head! Easy, sir. I don't want you to touch me! You take it easy! I got two handfuls. No evasions now, Doctor. We've been through too much. Well, the tumor had grown so large that a blood vessel nearby would thrombost. The malignant mass is beginning to invade the scalp. It is now glioblastoma multiforme. It's the worst kind of tumor. The production of malignant cells is increasing rapidly. I reached 11 centimeters. Eleven. And I never penetrated to healthy brain tissue. Where's Mead? He let me walk. Well, what's Gerson's number? I want to find out what I can eat. You can eat anything now. Absolutely anything. We'd better check with Gerson. No, we did. It's all right. It's unfair. They squirted my mouth with this stuff and I couldn't even talk. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Darling. What? I think it's too soon for you to walk. Well, then I'll crawl. Oh, my arm. You see that? You see my bruise? They put me under a general and not a local. I couldn't even protest. But they wouldn't listen to me. They just squirted my mouth with this stuff. Let's go to 21. I want a big steak. I want it now. A big steak, juicy, you know, like this thick. And with some french fries. And, uh, and some ice cream. Big thick soda with vanilla and chocolate and pistachio. Well, why didn't they put a plate in? At least I'd be able to sail or climb. What the hell with it? I'm gonna sail, I may even climb, I'll do whatever I wanna do. Anything else you wanna do? I mean, we could go to the theater. How about Palm Beach? I mean, wouldn't the sun be wonderful? I was always in a haze. Most of the time in school. Tumor must have been starting then. Why didn't anybody know about it? You know, adults are supposed to know things like that. Why is it that nobody ever says what they mean? 
people are usually pretty honest. Like in your book. I was reading the New York chapter last night, and you're very, very polite. You're a very important writer, one of the best known in the country. Why can't you just say what you think? Publishers are afraid of libel. It took you 5,000 words to say that nobody trusts Governor Dewey. Why don't you just come straight out and say what you think? It's important to try and not hurt anybody. How do you decide? You do the best you can and hope that you'll be forgiven for your mistakes. I've decided. And I've been nearly intolerable the last few weeks. I have a solution. And I'd like the two of you to help me. Sure, sure. I will need some tutoring and a voluntary suspension of all talk about being tired or needing rest. Hard terms. There they are. Agreed. The most important thing to me is to pass my Deerfield finals so I can graduate with my class. I'm going to take my college boards. I'm going to go to Harvard. The year before, I would have said in describing him, he lacks assertiveness and self-reliance. Now, he was a young man far ahead of his peers in maturity and the sense of himself. Third door on the right, I believe. Now, Johnny, this is a six and a half hour test. They were nice enough to give us this special time. Maybe they'd break it into two parts. I've never felt better. Nothing had brought us so close to life as Johnny's dying. He wasn't just dying. He was living. I've forgotten whether I thought I failed. I know I have every day, each at a time, to love him now. And for me, it's a lifetime. Check. And mate. John Gunther, you threw the game. You let me win. Yes. I thought you needed it more than I did. Oh, really? Yes. I absolutely creamed my college Oh, work. that's fantastic. Oh, Johnny, I'm so glad. <laughs> Thanks. Now I'll be able to go to college. <laughs> if I ever graduate from high school. I have something for you. A present. I love presents. And I've gotten over the idea that I don't deserve them. You do? Yes. <laughs> Here, let me. I love to open presents. It's a key case. Oh, it's really nice. Thank you. It's for college, when you go away to college. And what made you think I was going? I just knew you would. You did, huh? Hey, you know... If you're at Radcliffe, we can see each other every day, because I'll be right there at Harvard. Why do you think I'm going? Yes. Well, I knew you'd work it out. Is that why? Because you're 
because you never have before. I'm going to check in at the office. One of us will go with you, huh? No. Now, the arrangements are that I'll be staying in the infirmary. If you'll take my stuff over there, I'll meet both of you there later. Without the slightest self-consciousness, he took his place in his class. The boys stared at him for a second as if he were a ghost, then accepted his appearance without question. You heard his name called in rolls, as though he had never been away. anywhere near him at school. I was afraid he might fall. Suddenly it struck me. Johnny was alone. Even if he failed, he had to be alone. There was nothing I could do. John Clark Franklin. Theodore 
Bates Goodwin. Gunther Jr. John Gunther Jr. Cordy made it, Francis. He made it. after his graduation, I felt an apprehension, very deep and pervasive, though there seemed no specific reason for it. He'd been accepted to Harvard and was making his plans for the summer at the house in Connecticut. In some ways, he was better than he had been. I wished Francis would return. Steadily throughout the afternoon, he kept returning to me. All his sweetness, his remarkable goodness, seemed to be bursting out of him this day. Discussed fears of death with mother. For years I've had a lack of confidence in myself. Fears about ultimate reality. Accept death with detachment. Take more pleasure in life for its own sake. Saw Peter Blows after all these years. He and Edgar and I romped together in fourth grade at Lincoln. Phoned Mary. But she can't come to lunch. Discontent with the world. Recontent with the universe. Johnny died at eleven o two, June thirtieth. 1947. Francis reached for him through the ugly raincoat-like curtain of the oxygen machine. I felt his arms, cupping my hands around them, and the warmth gradually left them, receding slowly upward from his hands. For a long time, 
the warmth remained. Then, little by little, the life color left his face. His lips became blue, and his hands were cold. What is life? It departs covertly, like a thief death took him. I have no tears for death, for it is as much a part of life as birth. My grief is simpler and sadder. A sunny, fast wind along the sound. Good sailing weather. A light new boat will shake me to tears. How Johnny would have loved this boat or that wind. Of course, I wish we could have loved Johnny more when he was alive. But we can love what he stood for until we die and hopefully leave behind us what he did. The love of love, the love of life. 